Welcome back. The Taliban takeover. The U.S. is sending 3,000 troops back to Afghanistan now for what they say is to help evacuate the American embassy in Kabul as the Taliban seizes control of three more capital cities. Joining me right now is former Connecticut senator, United Against Nuclear Iran chairman, former Democratic vice presidential nominee, and the author of The Centrist Solution, How We Made Government Work and Can Make It Work Again. Joe Lieberman is here. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. I've been thinking about you to get your reaction to all that is taking place in Afghanistan. Your thoughts now about the U.S. sending the 3,000 troops back as Kabul is threatened. Well, thanks, uh, Maria. Hey, thanks for mentioning the new book, The Centrist Solutions. First time it's been mentioned, its uh, publication date is the middle of October. But that's more about domestic politics. So what's happening now in Afghanistan is a real nightmare. It's a diplomatic uh, nightmare for the, and security for the United States, but it's also a humanitarian nightmare for the people of Afghanistan. And, I, of course, I'm glad the president has sent in 1,000 more troops, presumably for the evacuation. Uh, I think that the decision he made uh, to pull all of our troops out uh, and stop our air power support of the Afghans was, was a real mistake. And uh, the American military and intelligence uh, community was warning him that exactly what's happening right now was a distinct possibility if we pulled back. Because to a certain extent, uh, I, I'm afraid this administration was relying on promises that the Taliban made that they would not take advantage of the American exit to try to uh, control and capture the country. They wouldn't uh, start uh, being violent toward women again, and they wouldn't execute um, Afghan soldiers they captured. But they've done all that recently. In my opinion, uh, it's a basis for President Biden to say uh, the Taliban did not keep its promises to us. Um, this policy is not going in the direction I wanted. Uh, it's wrong, uh, and it hurts the Afghan people who stood with us for a long time. It threatens the women of Afghanistan. And therefore, uh, I'm not going to bring out American close air power support on a, a August 31st, as I said. And I'm going to leave some of those two or 3,000 troops that are going in, presumably to help evacuate American personnel, as a way to, to say to the Afghan military, we're with you, uh, and to say the, to the Taliban, they cut it out, uh, stop your advance, or, or you're going to face yeah. uh, the force of the American but military. It but, but, Joe, is that at all realistic? I mean, do you really believe that Joe Biden will do that? Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing that we are now coming up upon 20 years away from 9-11. This September, 9-11 will be 20 years since that fateful attack and the trigger for us to go into uh, Afghanistan. Uh, there are excerpts from an upcoming book. The book is called The Afghanistan Papers, A Secret History of the War. This book says that former President Obama was not truthful in 2014 when he announced that the war with Afghanistan had reached a, quote, conclusion. Senator, can you really say there was ever a conclusion here? No, obviously you can't. And we can see it now as the U.S. announces we're pulling out. Um, it, it is about 20 years, of course, since 9-11, uh, when we were attacked from Afghanistan by al-Qaeda, which was given sanctuary by this very same extremist terrorist group, uh, the Taliban. Um, so 20 years is a long time. But uh, let's remember uh, from history that uh, the U.S. still has troops in Japan and Germany 76 years uh, after the end of the Second World War, we have troops in uh, Korea as well, uh, still. And it's to maintain stability uh, in those regions, uh, in our interest, and to protect our values. So the reality is that we had reached a, a stable uh, point in Afghanistan. We had just about 3,000 American troops and about 7,000 from our NATO allies. That was enough uh, to encourage the Afghan military uh, uh, to fight on, and it was enough to discourage the Taliban from um, um, seeking advantage, which they're doing now. So I, I think it's, you know, sometimes you just got to make, make a, an admission that you made a mistake. 
Whether the president, uh, President Biden, will do that now, I don't know. But this is uh, this this what's happening in Afghanistan today is heartbreaking and infuriating. It undercuts American credibility in the world uh, to our allies and encourages our enemies. I mean, the, the debacle in Afghanistan will help uh, our three major enemies of the world today: Russia, China, and uh, Iran. And so, uh, I, I think. Uh, it would be in the interest of our values and President Biden's own credibility that he that he uh, changes course and says, "I'm going to leave 2,500 or 3,000 American troops there. We're going to use American air power now to push the Taliban back, most significantly, uh, to protect the capital city of Kabul, so they don't uh, take over the entire country. Uh, otherwise, uh, the people of Afghanistan are going to suffer, and so are the people of the U.S." Well, I'm, I'm scratching my head on all of the foreign policy, Joe, frankly, including China. I mean, you just said one of the key enemies, adversaries, is the Chinese Communist Party, and they're getting more aggressive every day. And yet, President Biden pretty much agreed to a decline in defense spending. You've got all of our adversaries rising, and we are not adding one penny to the defense budget. Uh, it's actually a decline when you consider inflation. There's a great op-ed this morning in the journal about the Navy. Uh, General Jack Keane comes on this program all this time and says, when you look at the Chinese Navy and the American Navy, we're outgunned. That's what's been the case in the South China Sea as the CCP bullies its neighbors. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Maria. Uh, it's a dangerous world uh, in many ways, and we're facing both the a big power competition from China and, and Russia, which continue to invest in their defenses. We're facing an extremist uh, 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 Islamist terrorist uh, regime uh, in Iran, and we're facing a, the continuing power of terrorist groups like the Taliban and Al Qaeda. And, and ultimately, uh, you don't convince these people to behave and not uh, threaten and, and attack the U.S simply with a words of diplomacy. You have to have the military power uh, that they're afraid of. And you don't have that if you cut back on your uh, defense spending. And we're seeing it play out right now. People would say 2,500, 3,000 American troops in Afghanistan. Incidentally, as far as I know, we haven't lost an American soldier there in more than a year. How, how much difference yeah. could that many troops make? It made a world of difference, mm. and uh, that's why I hope and pray that President Biden will be big enough to say, yeah. uh, this is not going the way right. I want it, changing course. We'll see. So I many hope. costly mistakes. I... Joe, Joe Lieberman, thanks very much. We'll be watching that. We so appreciate it. We'll be right back. Stay with us.